The goal of this unit is to dig into the notion of a numerical ODE solver. You may recall that some ODEs can be solved analytically. That is, there's some closed form function that you can write down with a finite amount of effort and symbols that makes them true. ODEs for which this is not the case must be solved numerically with a computer. And that's the task we start today. The way to think about ODE solvers is to go back to that vector field and landscape idea from the last unit. An ODE is a box of mathematics that tells you, for every point in the state space, what the derivative is, that is, in which direction the state will evolve. Here's a schematic of that. The system F is an n-dimensional ODE system, and what you plug into it is the state vector x, and what you get out is the derivative of the state vector x dot. As an example, the simple harmonic oscillator equations take in an x and a v and give you back an x dot and a v dot. The pendulum ODEs take in a theta and omega and give you back a theta dot and omega dot. The state variables of the simple harmonic oscillator are the position x and the velocity v of the mass. The state variables of the pendulum are the angular position and angular velocity of the bob of the pendulum. This is a differential equation. Ferenc equation, like the logistic map, is a box of mathematics that tells you for every point in the state space what the next state will be. For a differential equation, which gives you just the direction in which the state's going to evolve, you have to do some work to get the next point. That's what an ODE solver does. The ODE solver takes an ODE, an initial condition, and a time step, delta t, and it gives you back an estimate of what the state will be at t0 plus delta t. In the state space, you can interpret that in this way, that the ODE solver is taking the blue point, the x at t equal t0, and figuring out what the next point will be. And you can then put the ODE solver in a loop in order to generate the next point after that, and the next point after that, and so on and so forth. What you would do then is you would feed this back to there, and what you would get out is the next point. Notice that I said an estimate of the next state. That's very important, and it goes back to my earlier point about the computer being the laboratory instrument in this field and the potential issues around that instrument giving you a faulty answer. That red point may not be right. It is always, in fact, because of finite precision arithmetic, going to be a little bit wrong, but hopefully it's not very wrong. We'll get back to that after I show you how these things work.